Hey guys, it is Camilla and I am going to be doing some macro invertebrate sampling today. So you guys have probably heard of the word micro before, which means something that is so small that you can't see it with your naked eye. You have to use some type of lens like a microscope. So macro is the opposite. It means it's something that is big enough that you can see it with your naked eye. So I am macro, an elephant is macro, an ant is macro. So anything you can see. And then invertebrate, the word vertebrate refers to our spine. And if you are an invertebrate, that means you do not have a backbone and you don't have any bones in this case. So what we're talking about are things that are big enough that you can see that don't have any bones. And that can take us to basically, we are talking about bugs, but we're talking about aquatic macroinvertebrates. And that means that they live in the water. So we're gonna be looking at water bugs. And there's a reason that we're doing that. This is actually something that scientists all over the world do because you can actually figure out how healthy your stream is just based on the water bugs that live in it. So we are going to get into the creek and I am going to do some collecting. We're going to find some bugs. We're going to figure out what kinds of bugs there are and we're going to talk about what it means. So in order for me to get in the creek, I'm going to put on some waders and waders are basically waterproof overalls. All right, now I'm all suited up and now I'm going to get into the water. So now I am in Butler Creek. This is the creek that flows through Fenzie Swamp. So if we followed it down that way, we would get to the floodplain where we have been doing a lot of our other videos. Um, and what I'm holding is a dip net and these are a special kind of net some people call them d nets because it's in the shape of a d um, but you want your dip nets to be stiff like this one um, because what i'm going to be doing is scooping up bugs and then i'm going to have to turn this over and pour water through the top to get the bugs to come out and if it were to crumple up the bugs would get caught in the net and they wouldn't come out so now we're going to do some sampling What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go underneath this vegetation and then I'm gonna come up and I'm gonna be shaking aggressively because what I'm doing is I know that there's lots of bugs living on this plant and they're holding on to it. And when I shake, it's gonna make them release and come into the net. So let's see if we can get something on our first try. So now I'm going to rinse it and it looks like I got a baby fish but not much else and I'm not looking for fish I'm looking for bugs so I'm going to dump this net and I'm going to try again. Alright so I see some movement so we're going to see what we got. All right, we have collected our samples and now we are going to figure out what we have and what it all means. We are going to be using something called a dichotomous key to figure out what kinds of species of bugs we have. And what a dichotomous key is, it's kind of like a choose your own adventure book if you guys have ever done those. You always start at the top, usually it's number one, and there are two options, two statements, and you're going to read the two statements and what they're going to be is describing characteristics of, in this case, our water bugs. And you have to look at the bug that you're trying to identify and decide which statement matches the bug you're looking at the best. So I'm going to key out um, a couple of bugs with you guys so that you can understand how this works. We will find out what it means once we figure out what all of our bugs are. We are going to start with this species right here and we actually have a very large one and a smaller one right next to it that you can see moving around. 
And this is a specimen that you guys have probably seen on TV and maybe never seen one in real life. And you will be surprised when you find out what it is. Now, we are always going to start at number one. And the first question on our key is whether it has segmented legs or no segmented legs. So what that means is do the legs have joints? Can they bend their legs? So basically it's asking, does it have elbows and knees like we do, or knuckles where they can bend things? So if we were to look at our bug, you guys probably noticed it didn't have any legs. So we're gonna say no segmented legs. And if we follow the dots, it's gonna tell us to go to number 14. So we are gonna have to flip the page over. And 14 is right here. So now it says, has small but distinct head, body less than a half an inch long, or appears not to have a head, although it may be retracted into the body. So this thing, I did not see a distinct head, and it definitely was not less than a half an inch long. So we're gonna pick B, and we're gonna go to 16. So now it says, fleshy caterpillar-like body, or body not caterpillar-like. I would not say that looks like any caterpillar I've ever seen. So we're gonna say not caterpillar-like and go to 18. Body without a hard shell or body with a hard shell? This thing is squishy, it does not have a hard shell. So we're gonna say without, go to 19. 19 says flattened, unsegmented, worm-like body, distinct eye spots, gliding movement, or a segmented body. So we're gonna look back at our specimen to see if it has unsegmented or segmented body and how it moves. So we probably saw the smaller one earlier. Let's take a shot at that smaller one and see how it moves. It looks like it is kind of moving like an inchworm. It has um, a suction on the back and one in the front and it's inching along. So I wouldn't say that's a gliding movement. And if we look back at the bigger one, when we say if, if it has a segmented body, if you look really closely, you can see there are lines going across the body. Those are all individual segments of its body. So if we go back to the key, we are gonna say that it does have a segmented body and we're gonna go to 20. So then it says, does it have a flattened body with suckers at each end? or a segmented earthworm-like body. And just like we just saw, it does have suckers at each end, so we're gonna follow the dots, and it tells us that this is a leech. So this thing is a leech, and what that means is that they will actually attach to fish and other things, and they will um, suck their blood, basically. So they have suckers in the front, they have a mouth, but they also have a sucker in the back that helps them move. And leeches actually tend to be kind of pretty when you find them in the wild. So you can see um, that they have patterns on their back and a lot of times they'll have cool colors and um, they're not quite as scary and grotesque as they are in the movies. Let's key out a different species now. So what you're looking at is our new guy we're going to be identifying. And I want you to notice um, anything you can about his uh, characteristics. So I want you to see how many legs he has, if they can bend, um, if he looks like he has wings, um, on everything you can notice. So we found one of these guys. He is actually a really big one. And we also found a smaller, younger one. And you can tell they look about the same. So we know these are the same kind of bug. And let's go over to our key. So again, we're gonna start at number one. We have to see if the legs are segmented or not. So you guys hopefully noticed that its legs were arranged, they were bent, which lets us know that there are segments. He's got some elbows and knees on those legs. So we are gonna go to two. Now, number two is about what number of legs. So hopefully you guys counted and you found that it has six legs, which is what I counted. And so now we're gonna go to three. Number three says, does it have no wings or wings not fully developed and do not cover the entire body or wings cover the entire body except for the legs may appear beetle-like. 
I did not see any wings, and if there were wings, they definitely were not fully developed. So we're gonna go to four. Is its head easily visible, easily visible head and legs, body longer than it is wide, or head and legs concealed beneath the body, body oval and flat? We definitely could see its head and legs, right? So we're gonna pick this one and go to five. Number five says, two or three distinct tail-like structures or no tail-like structures. And this one does not have any tails, so we are gonna go to eight, which is down here. And it says, does it have a fat abdomen and large eyes or not as above? So an abdomen is the back body part of a bug. Maybe let's get another uh, shot of its eyes and see if they look large to us. Those are its eyes and they definitely look large to me. This thing had some very large eyes and its abdomen is definitely fat. So we're gonna follow the dots and it is a dragonfly nymph. Now, a nymph is probably a word you guys may not be familiar with, and that just means it is the larval stage of a dragonfly. So dragonflies have a very interesting life cycle, and before I talk about their life cycle, I wanna talk for a second about the big change that a lot of bugs have to go through before they become an adult. This is a very big word, and it is metamorphosis. And what that means is a big change of their body happens. So there are two different kinds of metamorphosis. There is complete metamorphosis and incomplete metamorphosis. And butterflies are a perfect example of a complete metamorphosis. So let's talk about their life cycle for a second. Butterflies have four life stages. And the first life stage is an egg. So they lay an egg. And then what hatches out? A caterpillar. That is the larva. And then in order to become an adult butterfly, the caterpillar has to make a pupa or chrysalis. And if it's a moth, it's a cocoon. So we can call a chrysalis and a cocoon. That's both the pupa stage. So that's the third stage. So we have egg, larva, pupa. And then once they hang out in that pupa for a while, they are going to come out and they have become an adult, in this case, a butterfly. So for a complete metamorphosis, the four life stages are egg, larva, pupa, adult. Now dragonflies, they go through an incomplete metamorphosis. They only have three life stages. So they're skipping one of the ones that uh, butterflies have. And the life stage they're skipping is the pupa. They don't make a cocoon. So dragonflies, they lay their eggs in the water because their babies are aquatic. And so first life stage, egg. The larva hatches out and looks just like the guys we were just looking at. These are baby dragonflies. They are in their larval stage. And they are going to stay in that stage in the water, depending on the species of dragonfly, for up to a few years. And they are going to be breathing with gills that whole time. And what they do is they uh, take in water through their body and they actually shoot it out the back of their abdomen and they have gills that it passes through while they're doing that. So they are carnivores, they're in the water, they're eating other bugs. Sometimes they get big enough, like the big guy that we found today, that they will actually eat fish and other um, bigger creatures and the whole time they're shedding their exoskeleton, which is the hard shell that covers the outside of their body. And they're shedding their skin over and over again as they get bigger until eventually they shed their skin one last time, except for now they have wings that were tucked up underneath. And they stretch out those wings, they dry them out and they fly off and they only live as an adult dragonfly for a few weeks. So they spend the bulk of their life cycle as a baby, the larval stage in the water. And a lot of us don't even realize that's what they look like for most of their life. This is an exoskeleton. This is after they shed it and they became an adult. So you can see the hole in the back right here, that is where their body came out and they left their old skin behind. Don't forget to watch part two of our aquatic macroinvertebrate series where we'll be looking at the rest of the bugs that we found and we'll talk about what we can figure out about our stream just based on the bugs that live in it.